All right, so kind of as a final thoughts on our compressor video series, um, we're going to run through the price of what we've got into this thing, as well as a few interesting statistics comparing this to a comparable compressor pricing, stuff like that. So when I bought this compressor initially, I got the pump, the horizontal tank, and a three-phase motor. Paid $250 for that. Then I ended up needing this new vertical tank because the horizontal one had a hole in it. So that was another $250. The motor was $309. A whole mess of other parts, the gauges, a new check valve, a magnetic starter, pressure switch, a whole bunch of that stuff totaled up to $191.52. And then the paint gun, paint, hardener, reducer, all that that I used on the old tank totaled up to $73.96. So that means the total amount that I have into this compressor is $1,074.48. That's a lot more than I anticipated spending on this when I got into it. And... All things considered, I'm still happy with that because it was a learning experience. I got to learn a lot about air compressors, um, how they work, how everything goes together, and I feel like I know this compressor very well so that if something goes wrong with this, I can service it myself having that knowledge that I gained in doing this project. You can go into several different stores and for about $1,000 you can pick up a 5 horsepower air compressor. Now, and many of them may even have an 80 gallon tank, but if you look at the specifications, you'll notice that the CFM output is uh, seemingly kind of low. Um, one that I looked at was, I think it was $1,100, um, 80 gallon, vertical, 5 horsepower compressor, 2 stage, it's not half bad, right? 1000 bucks? Yeah. Okay. Um, but the CFM output was 14 CFM at 90 PSI. Now, in all reality, that would probably be a perfectly fine compressor for everything I do. But I did a little math with this compressor. Um, there's a whole procedure. You drain the tank, fill it up, and do all of this nonsense uh, from the kick on to the kick off and blah, blah, blah. So here's what I came up with. And I'm going to give you the numbers so that you can maybe find out, do the math yourself, and make sure that I haven't horribly gone wrong here, because I'm not a math magician. So, 80 gallon tank means there is 10.69 cubic feet of air in here. The compressor kicks on at 115 psi and kicks off at 145 psi, meaning there is a 30 psi difference there which equates to 2.04 atmospheres that have been added in that pressure change. The compressor does that in 1 minute and 11 seconds, and so that equates to 18.42 CFM, which, if you look in the manual for the Kellogg 335, theoretically, based on a 5 horsepower motor, the belt ratio that I have, spinning the pump at the RPM, it should be putting out right around 17 CFM. So I'm pretty close to that with synthetic oil and things. It, it may be, it's within a reasonable margin of error. So 17, 18-ish CFM, but that's not at 90 PSI. That's up between 115 and 145 PSI that we're putting out that 17, 18 CFM. So, if you spend a thousand dollars on one of those compressors, it's not putting out near as much air as this one. So, I started comparing and looking at other compressors, trying to find one to closer match this capability, and the only ones I could find that put out that much CFM in the five horsepower range were between about 1700 and $2,600. Um, Quincy made one uh, that looked pretty nice. Uh, there was a couple Ingersoll Rand units that looked pretty nice. Um, 
but all of them look dramatically beefier than the thousand dollar five horsepower ones. And talking to the guy that I bought this tank from, who sells air compressors for a living, he mentioned that a lot of those big box five horsepower compressors only run one belt, and there's a lot of things that they've cheaped out on in order to drive that price down lower. And he said that doesn't make them a bad compressor, just you have to be aware of where they've cheaped out and know how to plan accordingly because with a single belt it's more prone to slippage, you might wear belts out faster, whereas with a dual belt setup like this, he said, it's pretty much it's never going to slip, it's just going to keep running, you can use those belts for probably decades. And these are the original belts that were on it when I got it, so, you know. But, anyways, that's basically all I had to say. So, how about a little demo, just so that you know that it actually works. not really that loud, even standing right next to it, it's nowhere near as loud as my old compressor was. And there you have it. I'm very happy with it. I've used it to do a lot of sanding, a lot of painting, and the thing just keeps up like I'm not even putting a load on it. So I'm incredibly happy with it. Um, I know a few viewers have shared their experiences in finding these compressors uh, even cheaper than I have ended up paying for mine. And I too have noticed that. I've seen since I put this together, I've seen several for sale on um, Craigslist, Facebook, different places for a quarter of what I've got into this that already had a new motor and rebuilt compressor and a vertical tank and you know so there's deals out there. I put more money into this than I wanted to but I've got a good compressor and I was gonna pay a thousand dollars for one down at the local store anyways so this was a fun learning experience and hopefully um, some of my videos may have helped you guys out in knowing how to service your compressor and no doubt in the future we'll have more videos as I have to do things uh, to keep this up. I guess that's all we've got for uh, this episode. Uh, thanks for watching.